Thailand. With deep cultural history and surrounded by tropical paradise, it's clear to see why many tourists make the decision to come here every year. In 2019, solo traveller Miriam Bilt took a detour from a business trip to enjoy the white sands of this beautiful nation. But soon after beginning her excursion, she was met with her untimely end. As investigations began, they realised that her death was no accident. And what they found soon after was surveillance footage that painted a very haunting story. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another video by Coffeehouse Crime. Today we're looking at the case of Miriam Bielt. And just to let you know that a post solved, unsolved in strange cases here weekly. So if that's your kind of thing, please consider subscribing to Coffeehouse Crime. And so, without further ado, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and sit back, my friend. This is the case of Miriam Bielt. Today we're returning to a somewhat familiar tropical paradise, and that's the beautiful country of Thailand. If you're a regular viewer of Coffeehouse Crime, you will likely remember the several murders of Koh Tao. And although we are once again visiting an island, it's not the same one. Instead, we find ourselves on the lesser known island of Koh Si Chang. And if you haven't noticed by now, but Ko is essentially the Thai word for island, though it has been slightly altered for English speakers. Now, Koh Si Chang may be one of the closest islands to the capital city of Bangkok, but it's actually one of the lesser known islands to tourists. With Koh Samui, Koh Phang An, Koh Tao, and Koh Phi Phi taking the crown as holiday hotspots, Koh Si Chang still heavily relies on its fishing industry, which to this day still remains its primary income. However, don't let this fool you. This doesn't stop the island from being a welcoming place for travellers, especially for those seeking something more authentically Thai. And in March of 2019, one of those who took to the island for its authentic atmosphere was 26-year-old Miriam Bielt. Miriam was a German tourist travelling solo around Thailand in March and April of that year. She had travelled far from her hometown in Hiddelsheim, Germany, where she lived with her mother and father. Miriam had grown up as a young woman that always had a plan. She was confident, methodical, and very self-assured. Her sense and smarts helped her achieve high grades throughout her education. And she did so well that after graduating high school, she enrolled in the University of Hanover to study mechanical engineering. Miriam studied for five long years before graduating with a master's degree. And after her graduation, it didn't take long for her to find employment either. With Germany's booming automotive industry, a person of her calibre was sure to find work. Touching on this for just a moment, but she began her career as an engineer working for a small company before eventually being snapped up by Issy Automotive in mid-2018 as a design engineer. And being stationed at the Hildesheim site, she could still live at home with her parents while she saved her her own future home. Miriam's new company had a far-reaching international presence, which meant that her work took her travelling rather often. And it just so happens that in 2019, her job would send her to several Southeast Asian suppliers to negotiate some design work. Now, Miriam, she loved to travel around, but let's be honest here, it is no fun if it's just strictly business. She therefore decided that, this time, she'd mix business with pleasure and spend a few extra days in Thailand. She had always heard of its white sandy beaches, clear blue waters, and deep cultural history. So with that in mind, she wanted to explore the country all for herself. And so, after completing all work with her company's suppliers, she boarded a flight towards the capital city of Bangkok. Now, there will always be an element of danger when travelling alone, but Miriam, she was well experienced in this. She knew her way around, kept herself safe, and took no risks. I'm talking about all the general kinds of risk reductions, which includes not going out after dark if you're alone, keeping all of your valuables close by, and remaining vigilant and aware of strangers. That final point was never a problem for Miriam. Although she had always felt safe when travelling, she did recognise that she was a young woman who was travelling alone. And, unfortunately, you never know who might see that as a point of weakness. Nevertheless, the courageous engineer didn't let this get in the way of her travels, and she wasted no time in getting out and enjoying the Thai sun. A short time after arriving in Bangkok, Miriam decided to move her excursion to the city of Pattaya, which can be found in eastern Thailand. And located just off the coast of Pattaya was the island of Koh Si Chang. Come Sunday the 7th of April 2019, Miriam boarded a ferry to the island for a short trip. Her plan was simple. She wanted to sample out the local fresh seafood, visit a few ancient temples scattered around the island, 
and take in the vibrant coastal atmosphere. Arriving shortly after noon, Miriam rented a motorbike to tour the island, which is a very common mode of transport found across Thailand. And after planning her route on Google Maps, she then set off on her journey. One of her chosen destinations was a stone monument located at the top of a hill. And although it was somewhat secluded, Miriam liked going off the beaten track for a unique travel experience. Tragically, and not knowing until it was too late, but going here would have dire consequences. After parking her motorcycle and greeting a flower salesperson at the base of the hill, a surveillance camera captured Miriam walking up the stone stairs towards the monument. The round trip should have taken no longer than five minutes, give or take time required to take in the views. And although Miriam was seen going up the hill, surveillance cameras never recorded her coming back down. Which was odd, as this was the only primary way down the hill. Not forgetting that her motorbike was parked and waiting for her to return. As day turned into night, it became obvious that something was awry. Albeit a nice temple, there was nothing else up that hill worth staying for. So the big question was, why was she up there for so long? And why hadn't she come down yet? Travelling alone, it wasn't unusual for Miriam to go quiet on social media for a few hours. But as the evening came around, those back at home began to wonder where she was. And, unfortunately, the reason for her disappearance would soon come to light, when a Thai tourist was taking a walk along the secluded trail. Halfway up the temple's hill and down the side of a small ravine, they spotted something out of place. And after taking a second glance, they noticed that it was the tangled body of a young Western woman. Tragically, it would soon be confirmed to be the body of Miriam Bielt. She was found lying in a pool of her own blood, partially covered with leaves and debris, and wedged between two rock faces. Horrified by the view, her discoverer immediately informed authorities, and soon after this, officers ascended the hillside to secure the scene. After examining the body, it was concluded that, clearly, this was no accident. She hadn't simply stumbled down the ravine and injured herself. There was much more to it. For one, she was entirely naked, and although one of her legs was broken, her face and head seemed to have been repeatedly bashed with something hard, like a brick or a rock. Tragically, it became evident that Miriam had been sexually assaulted before being murdered. But who exactly was responsible for these violent actions was still unknown. Now sometimes, the cases that I cover contain very smart criminals. However, as you'll soon find out, this one is not one of them. As we've already established, but the temple on this hill had only one entry point, and was guarded by a surveillance camera, the same one which recorded Miriam earlier that day. To add to this, only one person went up after her. Kind of obvious, but it didn't take authorities long to identify their most likely suspect. The surveillance camera captured a man pulling up and parking his motorcycle, before briefly talking to the flower salesperson and purchasing some marigold. He then ascended the stairs shortly after Miriam had done so herself. Now fortunately, there happened to be one witness who had seen both Miriam and the unidentified man walk up the hill. That being the flower salesperson working at the vending stall located at the bottom of the temple. The witness told authorities that he had watched the man come down the hill shortly after he had ascended. And although he wasn't sure due to the man's dark attire, but he thought his clothes seemed rather wet and discoloured. Asking if he was okay, the walking man just shrugged him off and said that he had taken a fall. But this didn't sit well with the salesman, so he therefore took a mental note of the man's appearance and the number plate of his motorcycle. Needless to say, but his feeling of concern proved to be justifiable, and this information was eventually passed on to authorities. And after running a search on the number plate, they found that the motorbike was linked to a man named Ronicorn Ramruin. Ronicorn was a 24-year-old local from Koh Si Chang. Although he lived on shore, he also owned a boat which he used in his job as a beach cleaner. And by day, the man would sail around and collect rubbish washed onto the shore. He was described as a quiet bloke who liked his own company and didn't mind working alone. Which is fair enough, but outside of his job, he didn't seem to do much of anything else either. After work, he would go home, watch TV, and drink beer. Which, to be honest, sounds like the life of many young men in their 20s. But Ronicorn had a rather dark secret that he kept under wraps. He had a crippling chronic addiction to methamphetamine, which is also known as meth. And he would abuse this substance regularly, meaning he was never genuinely sober throughout his everyday life. Now this guy was looking shady at best, and following their growing suspicions, Ronicorn was arrested the very next day as he worked on his boat in the island's oceans. 
And due to the evidence stacked against him, which mainly comprised of surveillance footage, it didn't take long for Thai authorities to wrangle a confession out of him either. In fact, this case was sold alarmingly fast, and within 24 hours of Miriam's death, the cruel and gruesome details of her demise came to light. On the morning of his actions, and like many other days, Ronicorn had woken up in the early hours of the morning. He started the day by downing a few beers and a couple shots of hard liquor. Sadly, this wasn't enough for him, and his cravings for the heavier stuff kicked in. After using methamphetamine, Ronicorn jumped on his motorbike and went on a meth-high motorbike ride. One which ended at the base of the stone temple, where he then saw Miriam ascending the stairs. Now, any average person would simply go about their day, but not Ronicorn. In his mind, he saw something he wanted from Miriam. After spotting the flower merchant in the parking lot, Ronicorn foolishly bought some flowers, thinking the young woman would be swooned by his gift. Flowers in hand, he ascended the staircase in pursuit of Miriam, and once he'd managed to catch up with her, he tried to initiate conversation. The young woman was clearly uncomfortable. Ronicorn then offered her the flowers before propositioning for sex. Now, needless to say, but Miriam refused. She was visibly scared by the man. Even worse, she had suddenly found herself all alone on the top of a hill in a forest, with a stranger asking her extremely inappropriate questions. After refusing, she turned on her heel and tried to walk away. But Ronicorn followed her. Little did she know, but he was biding his time, waiting for the perfect moment to jump on the young woman. Just moments later, he saw his opportunity. He grabbed Miriam and dragged her into the surrounding forest. She screamed, but no one was around to help her. Sparing the details, but Miriam was assaulted. And after he was done, she was understandably traumatized. The young woman then attempted to flee from Ronicorn. She ran down the side of the hill towards the trail and back to safety. But even in his diabolical state, Ronicorn knew he could not let her escape. She had seen his face, and he would almost certainly be caught. And with his intentions now evolving, he therefore decided that she had to disappear. During this thought process, Miriam had created significant distance between her and her assailant. But in her panicked and injured state, she tragically tripped and fell over, giving her assailant enough time to catch up with her. Grabbing a nearby brick, he repeatedly beat her head with it, and this unfortunately ends with her untimely death. Miriam Bilt had been murdered in cold blood. Although Ronicorn had killed her to cover up his crime, he didn't actually seem too bothered about hiding Miriam's body. Dragging her back up the hill and into a slightly wooded and rocky area, he then threw her body down a shallow ravine and crudely covered her in leaves and debris. Miriam was still partially visible from the trail after this, which is how a local tourist would find her just several hours later. After committing the murder, Ronicorn brazenly returned home, where he washed his blood-stained clothes, sat on his couch, watched TV and smoked cigarettes. Luckily, this would fortunately be his last evening as a free man, as after leaving for work the next day, he was promptly tracked down and arrested. And after confessing to authorities, forensic evidence was collected from the crime scene, Miriam's body and Ronicorn's home. A reenactment was carried out to portray the sequence of events, with Ronicorn acting out exactly how he murdered Miriam. During the reenactment, his head was covered with a blue bag to protect his identity. It all seemed rather haphazard, and Ronicorn seemed hesitant to cooperate with officers. Moving forward, but Thailand's judicial system was rather rapid to reckon Ronicorn, and just three months after the murder of Miriam Bielt, his trial had arrived. It was a relatively open and shut case. With the surveillance footage and his confession, there was very little to no doubt. And although Ronicorn would never apologize for Miriam's murder, his mother came forward to apologize on his behalf. She told the court that since they no longer lived together, she had no idea what her son was up to. But nevertheless, his actions had horrified her. So much so, that she herself called for the law's full force. Rightfully so, but he was kind of exiled from his mother here. The maximum sentence for murder in Thailand is the death penalty, and Ronicorn's mother suspected that her son would likely offend again should he be released. Ultimately, she was basically saying to the court, give him a life sentence or the death penalty. Ultimately, Ronicorn Romruin pleaded guilty to the murder of Miriam Bielt, and with a crime so callous and vile, he was therefore sentenced to death. The man is now awaiting his punishment on death row, until the day his execution arrives. As a side note, but the island's residents were horrified to learn this story. 
Thailand in general is a very peaceful country, and when they learned that an island local had been so disrespectful, violent and vicious towards a visitor, they were genuinely appalled and ashamed. Residents now refer to him as the Corn Devil, which indicates anger and revulsion amongst the Thai public. They had never witnessed such violence on the island, and hoped that the actions of one man won't affect future tourists arriving to Koh Si Chang. Their compassion also demonstrates Thailand's general tranquility. After Miriam's passing, the local community banded together to express their condolences. From mothers to children, and teachers to monks, they all came to the area where she was found. They laid flowers, mourned the loss of their visitor, and prayed for her and her family in the hope that they would soon find peace. Thailand relies heavily on its tourism industry to keep itself running, and this kind of bad publicity can affect the industry and its local Thai population. This is why Thai authorities always tend to quickly and quietly solve foreign crimes, and unfortunately, this also includes them sweeping these stories under the rug in haste to keep a safe appearance. If you've watched my video on Koh Tao, you will likely know that the Thai police have previously been scrutinised for their corrupt behaviour. It's a national problem that, hopefully, will cease to exist one day. After Ronicorn's trial, the local tourism industry declared that the bad guy is gone, and there are only good ones left. They actively encourage tourists to come back to Koh Si Chang, and although its reputation hasn't been tarnished too much, the locals have definitely been scarred. But none of this compares to our one true victim today. Miriam was a bright young woman who grabbed life by the horns. She was at the very beginning of a flourishing career, but also found the time to look after herself and broaden her horizons. She had so much going for her, but sadly, all of that was ripped away. In honour of her life, the University of Hanover now gives out the Miriam Built Scholarship to aspiring engineers who need support. And as for Ronicorn, he will face his punishment in due time. Otherwise, I hope that Miriam's family, friends, and the people of Ko Si Chang will find peace moving forward. But uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up today's case, folks. Thank you so much for watching another video today by Coffeehouse Crime. If you found this case interesting, or you learned something new, then please remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. As always, please share your thoughts in the comment section down below, and I'll be back again very soon for another video. Until the moment arrives though, please remember to look after each other and stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye. As day turned into night, it became obvious that something was awry. Awry? Awry? Awry. It's definitely awry, isn't it? Awry. 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 Okay, thanks Google. Hey little man. What? Oh, you make so many noises. Do you know how many times you disturb me? I'm pretty sure he's plotting my death. Depends entirely on you.